Hi, Scott Moyes here from Cabro Systems in New Zealand. In the previous two videos, I showed how to rough and then finish a part that had been partially turned up on a lathe. But that was only on one side of the part. So in this video, we're flipping the part over and we're going to do the second operation and finish off the part completely. So as you can see, here's the first op, and that's the material that's been defined. We need to set up a second operation this time with the z-axis pointing in the opposite direction and the origin on the opposite face. So if we roll the part over and then set up a new job, we've still got the model selected so that's fine, but we need to change the stock to from solid and select that solid body from the browser. We need to make sure that we select continue machining from previous job, that makes sure it goes and looks at the, the stock that's been left over after all the other toolpaths have been applied. Use stock and orientation is just fine, but this time I need to make sure I select a face on the opposite side of the part. So any horizontal face with the normal in the correct direction means that the z-axis is going to point up. And I'm going to, out of all of these options here, I'm going to select top center. So now I've got my job set up, I need to rough out all the remaining material that's left on that side of the job. So I'm going to use 3D Adaptive Clearing again in the same way as I did, or in a similar way as I did last time. I'm going to continue using the 16mm flat tool. And on the Geometry tab, I'm not going to select any boundaries or anything like that, but I am going to set a whole bunch of options here in the REST Machining group. I want it to be from Operations. I want to turn on from Job Stock and leave all these other settings applied down here. With those set we can move on to containing the toolpath. I don't need to come all the way down to the bottom of the part because there's, not, there's no more material left. I just know that there's material left on the top, on this top face here above these, um, above these faces. So I'm going to change this to selection, select this face and then choose negative one just to make sure we get all of the material. And just to get the tip of the tool past the bottom of the remaining stock then all that remains is for us to turn on flat area detection just to make sure that it gets within 0.5 of a mil of this face down here which is the, the value of the stock to leave. Once that's generated you'll see that it hasn't actually gone down inside the part. That's because there's no stock there and it wasn't because we turned off machine cavities because that was still turned on. So I'm happy with that toolpath. It's come down, well, I, realistically with a 16 mil tool I could come down even further. So let's just edit this quickly and change the maximum roughing step down to two times diameter and there we have it. We can see the flat area detection coming into play here and, and the 3D adaptive clearing has come up and stepped up this fillet radius here just to clear away any remaining material that's left there making it easier for the ball mill to come around and finish these faces later on. So now all we've got to do is finish these horizontal faces and then finish these fillets off and then come around and finish off this um, vertical face here around the outside of the cylinder and then of course drill and tap the holes. So to finish off these flanges let's use the horizontal strategy like we did in the, in the first video. Sticking with the 16mm tool and I'm happy with everything on the geometry tab we're just going to let it go and find what it needs. I just need to set the heights. So in this case, I don't want to apply any toolpaths to this top face here. So I'm going to restrict the toolpath using from model top, minus one millimeter. So it's going to stop any toolpaths being generated above that plane. Then on the passes tab, I want to turn on the stock, some stock to leave. And I want to leave 0.1 of a mil actually, just to be able to come back and finish this face off um, afterwards and also this fillet radius. But I want this to be a finished toolpath on this top face here, so I'm setting that to 0mm. Now let's see what we get from that. Okay, so now we can see we've got some toolpaths that have been generated inside this cavity here. It's not checking the stock, this particular toolpath. So I need to stop it from generating any toolpaths down there. To do that, we'll come back into the Heights tab and set the bottom height to from selection. We'll select that flange and then allow it to search for flat areas one mil below that face. And we can see that we've got all of the faces we want to surface are above that, so we're good to go. Now there's no two paths in the bottom of there. 
and we've just got them where we want them. The next step is to, to get into doing the 2D contour. But we're not going to use a flat end mill, we're going to use a 9mm ball mill. Okay, and we don't have to come, come in here and select all these individual edges. We can, in fact, select this top edge. We just need to make sure that we get the direction right, so we'll flip that over. By default, with the 2D contour, it's only going to come down to the height of the selected contour. So we need to make it go down further than that. So the bottom plane we're going to change to from selection and select one of the faces of this flange. We want to do multiple finishing passes this time around. So just to make sure we get a really nice finish on this fillet, we're going to go two, two passes at a quarter of a millimeter. We could go finer, but that'll do for now. And then we want to make sure we get a finishing overlap in here. We'll go with 10 mils just to make sure we cover all of our bases and then we'll accept that and see what we get. So we've got a finishing overlap here and everything looks good. Alright, so all that remains if we now simulate both of these jobs Oops, don't want to do that. I want to do stock simulation run that through Okay, so we can see we've got everything completely finished apart from those holes. Now the drill was pretty cool, um, so I'm going to use that to drill these holes out. But what it's actually going to find is the large holes in the middle as well. But we'll just go back and tidy that up later. So using the drill wizard, I let it search through all the libraries and we'll just click OK. And it's immediately found all of the holes. And apply toolpaths to them. Okay pretty sweet. So we just need to come in here and delete all of these because we don't need them. I'm actually going to suppress them instead. Because if we regenerate them later it's just going to recreate them. So we've now got these all of these holes drilled and the final th remaining um, tool paths to apply are the taps. So we'll do a normal drilling in this case and we're going to select a number 7 10 mil tap. And we'll just select this hole here and this hole here. So that's our two 10 mil holes. We don't need to, we can turn off tool orientation. We don't need that. Instead of selecting them like this, what if we use select same diameter? Straight away, it's gone and found the other hole. It hasn't gone and picked up on all the other holes, so we don't have to make that selection top twice. Now, if there's another 10 mil tap that's added later on, then it will find that when you regenerate this toolpath. So that's a good option to use. I actually want to make sure that it goes through the bottom, so we'll turn on drill tip through bottom, and we'll accept that, and then move on to doing the next one. So we'll drill again. This time we're going to select the number 12. 12 mil diameter tap and select this hole over here make sure we select drill tip through bottom and accept that I've just remembered that by default these um, the drill wizard doesn't force the drill tip through the bottom so we just need to come back in here and edit this and just turn on drill tip through bottom on each one of those now when we simulate both jobs we'll see that the entire part is now finished. Okay. So that's a part that's been initially turned on a manual lathe just to get all the tolerances that are required on the bore and the circlip grooves and then we've put it onto a mill and, uh, and created all of the toolpaths that are required to CNC machine all of the remaining features of the part. I hope this series of three videos has been helpful and uh, thanks for tuning in guys. I hope you have a good day and we'll see you again next time. Bye.